so that's the idea of those books. But a lot of people have criticism of those books and this kind of math reform that goes on. And they're valid because there's a couple problems that go on with this. First of all, the people who are teaching those in the schools don't necessarily buy into the program. They don't think it's that a good idea. So if these books are trying to teach something, but the teachers don't think it's a good idea, it's not going to work. That's one. Another big thing is the tests we use nationally to determine how we're doing in math or any other field, and then that those test results tell you how much money a school gets or how successful a teacher is because they track teachers by their student success. Those tests are not about this. Those tests do not follow this, what is math about? They're formulaic and about patterns and about basic skills. So if you're teaching this one thing and then testing something else as your national test, well, then you're not preparing the students for this national test, which will then tell everybody that your school is failing and you won't get the money and these students will be suffering and the teachers will get fired, etc., etc. So the system doesn't really work. You can't just change, reform math and not reform the system of education that says whether this works or not. But it's not necessarily the book's fault. So I just want to go back to the idea of what do we want children to learn? Or all the way up through college age, what do we want them to learn? Do we want them to learn memorization of formulas and skills, or do we want them to understand what they're doing and see that it applies to their life? Now, I think the answer is we want both. We want our children to understand the concepts and be facile enough at these algorithms and these processes that by the time they do get college age, they've got them down and they aren't constantly worrying about when you add two fractions, do you use a common denominator or is that, do you flip them or do you multiply across uh, all those kind of confusions. I would like to see that they've had enough practice that that stuff is second nature, but it's not happening. So there is a problem. I don't dispute that those books aren't a solution. You can't just throw them into a system and hope they'll solve it. But the idea is behind them. The idea is to teach them understanding. And the negative side is if we continue to just go back to the way it always was for us, formula, 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 memorize this, memorize that, memorize that. When these students come to college, they will not understand how to think. And if you watch the video, Math Education, Inconvenient Truth, you'll see that when she lists the three major problems that she encountered in the college students, they're not about these books. The problems are the students don't know how to think. They don't trust their thinking processes. These things do not come from memorizing formulas. If you go back in time, students didn't understand math then either. One of the more interesting things I found in my department of math, I did a little history, and people have been saying for 10 years in my department that skills have decreased. In 1940, I found a letter from the chair of the math department saying they had tested all of the seniors at my college and checked their math abilities, and 60% of them couldn't pass an eighth grade math test. And then the chair said, we are aware that this difficulty has been on, going on for at least 10 years. This is a perennial problem in our education system. Maybe Maybe everywhere, I have no idea. In our education system, that we have had problems with people learning their basic math skills. This is a problem that really needs to be addressed. But to say these reform texts are the problem, that these books here, that's not really the problem. What is really the problem? Many, many things. But this is part of it. One thing is that in our culture, all of the adults think math should be a certain way. And if when they see their children's book, it says, take 36 divided by 6 and give me two ways to show why this, how you find it and why this solution works. I never saw that when I was a kid. Shouldn't you just get credit for 36 divided by 6 equals 6? No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't if the goal is to teach them how to think and how to reason and how to go through this process. If the goal is to show them the quickest algorithm and get them to memorize a bunch of formulas and be able to use it efficiently, then that, yeah, that's terrible. But if that's not the goal, if the goal is to think and show somebody what numbers are so that when someone says, you go through a cave, the average height of the cave is six feet tall, and a person walks in and they're five feet tall, can they walk through that cave without ever having to bend down? Somebody doesn't go, well, let's see, average means the mean height is six feet and this person is five feet tall, so sure, they can go right through the cave and never go. That means you have no understanding of the idea of average. An average would mean some of it's very small and some of it's very high, maybe. You don't even know that. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. That's the kind of thing that is number sense, the idea of number. And this is what's missing from the students who suffer in school. A lot of the students actually come to college quite prepared, but a lot of them don't. And a big part of it is they don't step back. They don't step back from math and go, hmm, does this answer make sense to me? Do I, they don't even ask that question of themselves. Math doesn't make sense. 
There's no sense to it. It's just a bunch of stuff you memorize. And because of this sort of system where we ask them to memorize all these formulas and practice, 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 we encourage that. So I think it's good to learn skills, but it's got to be in a context of understanding. You understand it, and then you practice it till you have it mastered. It shouldn't be you have it practiced until you master it and never understand it, and it shouldn't be you spend all your time doing theoretical and you never master it. It's got to be both of them. My thoughts.